this one has the nose on it is like honey nut Cheerios. <laughs> You're always going to cereal, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a cereal guy. <laughs> He remind me of that. Remember that show, Beverly Hillbillies? The Je- <laughs> Jethro. 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 Don't tell people that. Big Chief ain't Jethro. I, I'd have to whoop him. <laughs> Jethro would pour a whole box of cereal in a bowl <laughs> with a gallon of milk. I do drink a lot of milk. <laughs> Welcome to another trip down the Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Mike. So grab a glass of your favorite bourbon and kick back. We would like to thank Tommy and Gwen Mitchell from Logheads Home Center for supporting this episode of the Bourbon Road. Find out more about their fine rustic furniture at logheadshomecenter.com. Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Shannon. And I'm Mike Hyatt. And this is The Bourbon Road. And today, Mike, we are at your house. We are right there at Jeff the Bend Farm. I know. We're in front of the fire again, so there'll be a little popping and cracking, I'm sure. Well, it's chilly outside, so I figured you'd like to be nice and well, warm and toasty. There was snow on the ground this morning when we got up. There was. There was a little bit of snow. What's old Woodrow think about that snow? He uh, he likes it. He gets out there, and you know, he runs around, goes crazy. That's, yeah. uh, that's good for that dog. Oh, absolutely. All right. So today, we have... Um, we have a couple of bottles to try in the first half. Yeah. It's just you and me and some Old Foe. Some Old Forester, yeah. All right. So Old Forester has released a new barrel, kind of a, a new expression of the barrel selection program. Mm-hmm. So uh, Old Forester single barrels have historically been uh, 90, 90 proof versions. Yeah. I it, think that kind of goes with that. Brown Foreman format, right? I guess it would be. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, they've got the Whiskey Rose series, which varies slightly in proof. But, you know, the old Forester single barrel picks have always been at, at 90 proof. Yeah. And so today we have one from uh, the Silver Dollar. This is part of your collection. Yeah, I, w- I picked up this the Silver Dollar, if you don't know, um, for our listeners. they It's a bar in near downtown Louisville um, on Frankfurt Avenue. And uh, they have another bar called the Pearl, which has the liquor license to sell liquor. And that's where I picked it up from. It's uh, one of their picks. Notes on it is uh, banana, nut bread, oak, and tobacco. Those are the published notes. That's the published notes. They, okay. When you go in there, they'll hand you a list of bourbons and it has the notes to it. And they're not going to offer you that list up. You've yeah. got to know about it. Um, so, so the Pearl of Germantown is, uh, is a small bar in Germantown. Yeah. It's also a bottle shop. So they have that license to sell by the bottle. Whereas the, um, silver dollar saloon sells by the drink. Yeah. That's kind of their slogan, right? Now, if you go into the Pearl, you're going to think it's hole in a wall. And I'll tell you a little secret about that place. It's designed to be that way. They bought everything in there um, when they bought that place. They bought the furniture. They wanted to make it look like a dive bar. And that's that's what it is. They But they got some great stuff. Yeah. All right. So the format today is going to kind of be like this. So we, we did receive some samples from Old Forester. They sent us out a couple of sample bottles of uh, their um, single barrel offering. This is uh, the George Garvin Brown single barrel. And uh, uh, it's coming out in two expressions. One is proof down to 100 proof. And then the other one is barrel strength. So I I don't know this for a fact, but I'm assuming that when you do a barrel selection, you can choose to have it bottled either at 100 proof or at barrel strength. So that's kind of you pull the trigger on that when when you do your barrel selection. So before you had to go to 90 proof. That's the only thing you could do. So now they're getting given an option there. And I think that's a great thing. It seems to me that old Forrester is really paying attention to what people are asking for. I think that hits it on both ends. If you get somebody that has like barrel proof and we've talked about that in the past, that'll give them option, but you've got people that still like at that 100 proof and that, that gives them that option. Right. So that's, that's, you know, you're trying to get both audiences there, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we've, we've uh, talked a little bit lately about 
distilleries that are hitting it on all cylinders, you know, kind of firing on all yeah. cylinders. And I think, I think Old Forester is one of those, you know, they, uh, their whiskey roast series is vastly successful, you know, with some great expressions there, the 1910, the 1920, um, the 1897. And then they came out with that rye that was just, just really hit the spot. Favorite for bartenders. Uh, it's a good pour. It's nice sipping rye. Uh, priced around 20 bucks, maybe 22. I don't, I don't know where it's at, you know, the price in everybody's area, but, um, really putting out stuff, high flavor, high value. And, uh, and now they're doing it again with this single, with the, uh, this adjustment to their single barrel program. So kind of excited to try these one at a time. Well, you're, you're over there talking, you know, you know, I feel bad sometimes, Jim, you over there start talking and I, I'm like, man, I just got to get a drink of this. <laughs> I'm over here sipping on it. That way I can gauge the look on your face and I just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a couple of buddies over before he came over today for lunch, um, a couple of good friends and stuff. And they, I let them raid my bottle collection and let them drink just anything I had and stuff they hadn't had or they can't afford. And, and I sent them home with some samples of stuff they hadn't had. And I mean, I let them open up everything. They're like, can I open this? And I'll, yeah. So Bob and Steve came over and they're actually two of in our Facebook group, the roadies. Okay. Um, and, uh, so I had a couple of drinks. I see a lot of posts from Bob in there. I think Bob is in there a lot. Now. Yeah. And Steve's in there too. He's yeah. uh, down at Shepherdsville and Bob's over in Goshen. So they're two local guys and both military vets. Um, so they, uh, they came over and got their two roadies, got to raid the Jeff, the Ben farm bar today. <laughs> oh, good deal. All right. Well, let's get into this, uh, this, uh, 90 proof old Forrester single barrel and see what we think about it. And then we'll, we'll move on down the road. Let's do it. All right. I definitely get on the nose. I get that banana bread. I, I do. see I, what they're talking I kinda about. I kind of get that a lot with the old Forrester. I think I get that. It's uh it's pretty common, but this is uh this is kind of an Oak forward nose too. It's sweet, but definitely uh what did they say? They say dry Oak. That was on the palate, though, I think. It, it didn't say on the palate. It just says their notes are very basic. Uh, it just said, you know, banana nut bread, tobacco, and and dry oak. Um, you know what shocked me about this, Jim, was that this pick was only $45. Yeah. I, I was just, I was like, I got to get that $45. I was, wow. Yeah, it's a value pick. Now, these are these are barrels that are in the four to five year range, right? Four, four years? This one was four years, six months old. Okay. All right. It's got a lot of color to it, though. It's got great, you know, you can look at my glass there from over there, and you can see that it has great legs on it. It is a little thin, but um, there's a lot of flavor there. It is a little drying, though. I would say that oak is, uh, you know, they said dry oak. I don't know if they meant oak flavor that's kind of drying on the palate. You get that a little bit with some of the tannins. I'm getting that right now, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's good. It's darn good. And for $45, I think it's a bargain. Now, she let me taste it before a bottle of it they had there open, and I tried to pour it, and then I bought a bottle. And, you know, as I'm I'm pretty happy with this bottle. Anytime you say banana nut bread, you know, a fat guy like me, <laughs> you get all happy. <laughs> a little bit of butter spread on it. Oh, man. <laughs> now, I'm not getting a buttery taste on this one. It's not real mouth coating, but um, like I said, it's a little thin. The finish on it, a little dry, just a hint of bitterness. Not bad, though. Um, and But, you know, it's got a bit of a hug. It's drink a little hot. and uh, But the finish is kind of short. Well, I'm surprised really. how hot it is for, for a 90 proof. I just, I didn't think it would be that hot at all, but maybe heavy on the rye. Do you know what their mash bill is there at Old Forster? I mean, I probably should have looked it up before we recorded here. I don't know. I, it may be available. I don't know. Well, we're going there in a couple of weeks, right? That's right. So Jackie uh, Zykin is going to sit down with us here in a couple of weeks, and, and we're going to talk all things Old Forester. Now, Jackie, here we got your name right. <laughs> I think we got your name right. <laughs> I hope we did anyway. If not, I'm sure she'll correct us. So. Yeah. All right, Mike. Well, I think that that was, uh, that's very nice. I enjoy that. I, I can tell you this much. I can tell that it is a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner than, than a hundred proof offering, but let's wait and see. We're going to try that one next. I, I think you're right on that. I didn't think it would be that light. And I, I've drank a lot of bourbons today. So 
I drank some stuff that was super, just super coat your mouth and stuff today. Um, I drank some decades, which was, you know, we've drank that before on the show and that gives you a different mouthfeel than, than what this would. Yeah. It's another level, right? Definitely another (laughs) level. I had some of that stuff in there's 20 years old though. All right. Well, let's switch over to our hundred proof, uh, the new offering. All right. All right. So I'm looking at this, uh, this hundred proof single barrel. And uh, it's not a lot darker than the 90 proof. Just a, just a hair, I think. But these are single barrels, Mike. So they're going to vary a little bit from barrel to barrel, both on color, nose, and palette, I'm sure. Now, it's not so much as that banana's not in there to me. Oh, this one's got more cherry on it. Mm. Oh, yeah, a lot more cherry. Not a spicy either. Caramel, vanilla, cherry. Not as much of that uh, that dry oak. I haven't tasted it. That's just all on the nose. And I actually, looking at the bottle, you know, it could be the bottles and how the curvature of them and stuff, the sample bottle and the, the regular bottle we got. But the store pick I got is actually looks a little darker. Well, it's hard to tell because yeah. that's a 200 mil flat bottle, yeah. flask bottle. So, But I mean, in the glass, it looks like it's about the same. Yeah, this one's definitely a lot more cherry and it's sweeter, I think. I think it's a lot sweeter than the last one. It's not drying on the back of the palate the way the other one was. No, but I will tell you this. It's very peppery. It is very peppery. Uh, on the finish, I can just feel that pepper just tingling my taste buds. That little pop rocks going off on the back, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad thing, you know. It's That's that's a good thing. I like this one a lot better than the than the last one. I don't think it's just because of the proof. I think they both have that. They they both drink a little hot. This one's probably a little bit more because of the peppery finish on it. But I, I like the cherry. I like the sweetness on this. It's uh, it's pretty darn good. It's not bad. I I don't know if I'd pick this up if if I thought it was this. Maybe if it's a store pick. If I see a store pick, and I'm sure somebody like the the. Silver Daughter will have a store pick this eventually, yep. and I'll get get a bottle of it. Well, this this is in essence a store pick. I mean, this is Jackie's yeah. icon's yeah. pick. She she chose this and put this bottle together for samples. It's called the George Carvin Brown. I guess they give a little spot on the bottles, just like they did on the last one, to put the name of the pick or the store or whatever on it. Hundred proof, definitely um, much happier to have a hundred proof version of this in my hand than a ninety proof. You think so? I, for me, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely so. I'm I'm happy at 100 proof with it. I think uh, they're stepping their game up a little bit. Maybe realizing that whiskey palates in America are on the rise, uh, meaning rise in proof. And we've talked about in the past. You know, we started out somewhere in the 80 range, maybe, mm-hmm. and we've we're rising in proof. I think over the years to where people 100 proof is not that much anymore. You used to hear 100 proof and like wow. Hundred proof, you know, wild turkey one hundred and one. Yeah, everybody was like, "That's high proof stuff." <laughs> well, you know, now uh, bourbon lovers palates are getting accustomed to elevated proofs, one hundred and twenty, yeah. one hundred and thirty, pushing one hundred and forty on some of them now. And, uh, and yeah, hundred proof is just the standard. Yeah. So yeah, cheers, cheers to them to realize that to uh, to see the future and where we're going. Yeah, I like it when a distillery has their ears open, so to speak. You know, they're listening to what people say. You know, and, and they, I'm sure they had to listen to a lot of people say, "Oh, can't we get that barrel strength? Can't we get? The, come on, guys, this is our barrel. Can we get a barrel strength?" Do you do you feel like people can take that too far and forget the past? Yeah, I think so. I, you, but you know, I think a lot of uh, think about it though. It was 1890 what when the Bottle and Bond Act was passed. And that was about that was all built around hundred proof bourbon. Sure. So I think uh, maybe we're just getting back to where we were. Yeah, I think quite possibly. But you know, I'm wondering if some bourbon companies um, out there, Jim Beam, the most they put that commercial out lately that they said they're forgetting their past, looking at the future, and they got scientists and stuff on there, a digital warehouse on there. I don't know, that kind of hurt a little bit when they said they're, it almost said we're going to forget our history. Yeah. And I I think that's a bad thing when you f- start forgetting your history and where you came from. Yeah. Well, I mean, progress is progress. People have sure. to change. I mean, it, it's, it's, 
a lot of this business is about efficiency as well. You know, one of the things that's happened over the years is barrel entry proofs have risen. The, 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 the proof at which the liquid is placed into the barrel off the still has gone higher and higher and higher. And, you know, I think Old Forester is uh, is working to try and make things a little bit better in that respect. I know that we, we were at Michter's. Michter's is running a lower barrel entry proof. A lot of the newer craft distilleries are looking at lower barrel entry proofs in order to try and get more flavors or different flavors out of those barrels. So uh, I like to see that. You know, I like to see the proofs getting moved up a little bit, you know, maybe not watered down as much. 80 proof is a little watered down. Watered down. 90 proof is even considered maybe a little bit watered down. But uh, 100 proof is right on spot for me. Right on spot for you, yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're right there. I I just don't want to forget the past. Or, I, or know. 101, as I like to say, is right there for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're drinking Old Forester today. That's right. Old Forester. But I'm going to talk about that in a bonus episode. That's right. So you got a bonus episode coming up where you're going to dive into the history of the Browns and JTS Brown and all of that kind of stuff. And even his ties to your wild turkey. Yeah, exactly. Now, there's some there's some ties there. It's a very fascinating, and that's something me and Jim have talked about and talking about history, and our listeners have said they like that. Yeah. And we want to give you more of that, and I think that's uh, something we like doing. We like talking about that history. We like talking about bourbon. Um, and we want to give our listeners what you want to hear. So, Jim, I've already finished this. I yeah, I'm, I'm just about done here. Well, I would like to say this. I, I'm glad to see the 90 proof version of these replaced with 100 proof. I think it's a bold move. It's a good move. I think everybody's going to be happy to see it happen. I think Old Forester is seeing the future. They're looking at it. They're putting out products that people want to drink. Uh, they brought out a rye, you know. 10 years, 15 years ago, was anybody drinking rye whiskey, really? Not so much. It's today, anyway. But today, everybody has a rye whiskey. Yeah. Even the big boys. They're like, oh, we got better put us put ourselves out of rye. That's a- and you got Elijah Craig right now. Do you, I wonder if Elijah Craig ever thought, hmm, I'm going to make a rye whiskey. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if he did. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, I tell you what. For me, I'm really happy about this Hunter Proof. I'm ready to get into the barrel strength. How about you? Let's do it. All right, Mike. So we've got this uh, the barrel strength, old Forester single barrel in our glass, and this is again the George Garvin Brown and uh, single barrel. This time, without a doubt, it's darker. Oh, it's it's. I'd say it's almost double. Yeah, in color, quite a bit darker. And I think the reason behind that is is because now on this sample bottle they sent us, they list the proof as one thirty to one thirty five. So this is not a this is not a label. I'm sure that they had to put through um, cola, but it's just a sample. It's a sample bottle. But they're telling us that the barrels are going to range at, at range, range at barrel strength somewhere between 130 and 135, probably. Oh my gosh, that nose is totally different. Oh, that is uh, honey cherry syrup. I got honey, uh, honey smackums uh, cereal. <laughs> smackums is that the one with the frog on it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's I smell that all day long. Oh my gosh, that is all that is honey all day long. I, it surprises me. It's the same barrel. It's just a different proof point. Totally different on the nose. Well, it's not watered down or anything. They didn't proof it down. So I wish we had known the exact proof on this. Yeah. Let's go ahead and cheers. Cheers. Oh, that is butter. Cherry. When it first hits your mouth, it, the sweetness there is it the honey's there. The honey. Honey butter cherry. Now it's it's hot on the back end. Which would you expect with the higher proof? Yeah. It's definitely hot. Uh, no doubt about it. But I'm gonna tell you this much. This just changes that that dram altogether. It really changes it. This is, um, it's impactful. It's very flavorful. I don't know why, but this one comes across very, very buttery and creamy on the palate. You ever had a really, really good pepper jelly? Yeah. That's what I get in this right here. You're still getting that pepper on the back end, aren't you? Well, I'm always going to probably get that pepper on the back, especially with this, but it, it, I don't think it's the, proof on this that is the pepper it's the rye in there that i'm getting that 
almost Tabasco taste on it. And I don't want to say that is a bad thing. It, it's a good thing. Yeah. But well, the sweetness it's, on this. It's definitely sweet. It's still sweet. It's it's definitely a, but it's a honey cherry sweet. And it's got, you know, that, that uh, the fruits on that get a little bit darker with the higher proof. So I'm getting more of a cherry plum, cherry raisin kind of on it. Hmm. Do you know these guys are actually, they're founders, JTS Brown and and George Foreman and Garvin Brown, they're all buried there at Cave Hill Cemetery. Oh, okay. I thought that was a neat fact. And so most people don't know there is a famous cemetery. And uh, what's the band that had people die up in Cincinnati? Uh, the Who. The Who. Yeah. And then that's a tradition for bands to come to, when they come to Louisville, they would go in there and pay their respects, respects to that to that concert goer that died. And, and uh, you know, um, Muhammad Ali's buried there. Mm-hmm. And uh, Andrew Jackson. I think, right? Is it Andrew Jackson? I don't know about Andrew. Andrew Jackson's buried down at the Hermitage in Nashville. Is that what it is? Um, Colonel Sanders, the famous chicken man. Is he? He's buried there. Okay. Um, but there's there's more famous people there. But there's a lot of um, bourbon, what would you call them, tycoons, bourbon tycoons. Uh-huh. They're buried there. And I thought that's pretty neat. So if you're on the bourbon trail and you're into that kind of thing, into, that, into cemeteries or uh, spookiness stuff, Hey, that's something else for you to do on the bourbon trail, I think, if you're going to do the urban bourbon tour. It's right downtown sure. um, Louisville. I thought that was pretty neat. That is neat. That is neat. Mike, I'm a big fan of this Ofo uh, barrel strength. <laughs> Maybe we can get us a, a bottle of it each while we go there. <laughs> yeah, I think I might want to. It's really good. Now, these are single barrels, folks, so they're going to they're gonna vary from barrel to barrel. They're not all going to taste like this, this buttery hot cherry we've got here. But I, I think it. And I, I'm trying to put a name to that. You know, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, man, it's still that, that honey smack them. So if you could have that hot, that's, that's what it would be. <laughs> Maybe if I put hot sauce in a, there's a Dallas Cowboys commercial with uh, one of their wide receivers and they call him hot sauce and he has a bowl of cereal and he's putting hot sauce on his cereal. <laughs> I wonder if he's re- eating them honey, honey smack them with hot sauce. Well, in, in full uh, disclosure, everybody, we'll let you know that we did just crack these bottles. We haven't been sitting with them at all. So in order for us to give a fair review of it, I think we should spend a couple of days with it. What do you think, Mike? Oh, most definitely. And you know, most people know our reviews are a little bit different than everybody else's. We're, we're not pretentious. We're not, bourbon snobs you know we're just two dudes that like to drink bourbon and and we're two dudes that like different things yeah so um kind of get a view from both ends of the field right i like the sweetness in it and i'm sure you like the spice in it that's right i like the higher proof i think you like the higher proof too i appreciate the higher proof for what it is it's not for me every day mm-hmm. it's something i'll visit every once in a while this is something i'm not, I'm not going to sit down and drink two or three glasses of it i can't do it mm-hmm I'd be laid out on the floor. <laughs> it's good stuff, though. Well, I tell you what, Campbell Brown, Jackie Zykin, job well done. I think that the the those two teaming up have done some great things for uh, Old Forster in the past couple of years. Yeah, I think Jackie, from what I see from her, she she's a great marketing tool for that company. She's out there. She's engaging. Um, and I think companies need to have somebody like her. And she's got it. She's, she's in touch. She's, yeah. she's in touch and she's got a great palate. And she drinks the bourbon. Yes, yeah, she does. I mean, that's, that's good. How's our, you know, how's our outreach doing, Jim? What do you think? Us? Yeah. I mean, we're, I mean, I said it earlier in the show about old Forrester. I'll say it about us. We're hitting on all cylinders right now, Mike. Things are going good. You know, we uh, we just recently, I think I checked today, and we were uh, we were number twenty eight on the Apple Podcast chart. So that's uh, I feel pretty proud of that, man. I I tell you what, I'm, I'm, I'm thank you for bringing me onto this this project, this this podcast. I'm just amazed what two guys that just two old country boys out here in the country. You know, and we got a great podcast, but it's because our listeners, you know, they're tuning in, they're telling their friends about it. And uh, it's because of our listeners of what we're doing today. But it is a lot of hard work on me and Jim's effort to get an episode out there. And I, I don't think a lot of people realize what it does take to do an episode. But we're having fun doing it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I have a blast doing it. There's no doubt about it. We're getting to meet some great people, uh, not just people who are 
well-known and in the industry, but also great listeners, people that listen to us, that uh, we meet at, you know, when we go out, uh, people on inst- social media who reach out to us. Yeah. And, you know, we've got our Facebook group, The Bourbon Roadies, and we've got 150 some odd friends in there. And I, every one of them, I think, is very engaging. Uh, we got a lot of people posting every day now. I love it. Uh, yeah. It's hard. It's hard for me to keep up with, but I, I do enjoy that of seeing their bars. If, if you got a bar, put it on there. Show us what you have. If you buy a new bottle, hey, be proud of that bottle. No matter what it is, nobody's going to bash you in there. I'm telling you that right now. If they do, well, hey. They're out. Yeah. Yeah. We, we want to keep it civil in there. But, you know, some people listening might not know what the Bourbon Roadies is. So let me just give you a quick rundown. We have a Facebook page. Mike, you spend a lot of time uh, working in that Facebook page yep. and putting some nice posts out. But if you come to our Facebook page, The Bourbon Road, we're at The Bourbon Road. Uh, when you come there, uh, if you select our group, we have a private group called The Bourbon Roadies. And in The Bourbon Roadies, you can request to join, and uh, once you request to join, you'll just have to answer a couple of questions. Pretty simple. We wanted to make sure you're 21 and you like bourbon and you're not making a mistake there by entering the wrong group. Sure, yeah. But uh, once you come in, uh, we'll welcome you like a long-lost friend and chit-chat and talk about bourbon and post pictures. And I think we've we've been mentioning over the past couple of shows here that we have a plan on doing some kind of live events, some chat rooms. Yeah, we gave away some glasses uh, this last week uh, to five five listeners that gave us great reviews on uh, Apple Apple uh, Podcasts. And hey, if you're out there, please give us a review. Uh, it it helps us out. It makes us feel good. It boosts our egos. Not that I need to, my head to get any bigger, but <laughs> it it does help out. And we got some great people in the roadies. We got some distillers in there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we got some other podcasters in there. The Bourbon Lens, My Bourbon Podcast. Yeah. Who else is in there? My Bourbon Journey. We got uh, Jason from the Mash and Drum and uh, some yeah, some other people, some distilleries, some master distillers and other people are in there. It's a great place. It's a good place to be. You know, we had somebody brought up something the other day about uh, they had heard a rumor that Wilderness Trail was discontinuing their their rye bourbon. And uh, and I just, I just kind of tagged. Uh, Pat Heist in there and said, Pat, is this true? And he came back and said, fake news, fake news. Because <laughs> he's a member of the roadies. He is. So it's a lot of fun. We have a good time. Well, Mike, let's let's wrap up the first half here. Um, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to rate them one, two, three, meaning I think I'm going to rate those uh, in reverse order of tasting. My favorite is by far the barrel strength, then the 100 proof, and then the discontinued version. Well, I'm probably going to shock you with mine. Yeah, let's hear it. I'd say my number one was that their new... 100 proof? Barrel proof. Oh, the barrel proof. Yeah. Um, The store pick would be my number two. Okay. I like that banana, that sweetness. And that that 100 proof was just black. Kind of, I hate to say that. It it was just there. Um, I didn't find anything special in that one. Well, that's the thing about single barrels. You know, when you get down in that proof range, you're taking a look at the flavor profiles of those two. You like the you like the one that... Uh, was, Sweetness, that yeah. banana bread and stuff. And that that's just me and you, we're going to differ sometimes. But we agreed on that, uh, that barrel proof, though. Absolutely. That, it that is delicious. It's wonderful. Yeah. All right, Mike. We'll, we'll take a short break here. And when we come back, we've got another pour. All right. All right. I'd like to thank Tommy and Gwen Mitchell from Logheads Home Center for supporting this episode of The Bourbon Road. Logheads Home Center, nestled in the hills of Kentucky, is an industry leader in building handcrafted rustic furniture. Family owned and operated, they take pride in offering only the very best for their customers. The Logheads, and that's what they like to call themselves, are skilled woodcrafters who are passionate about creating rustic furniture for people who appreciate the beauty of natural wood. Owners Tommy and Gwen don't just sell the rustic lifestyle, they live it. And you can be sure that Logheads Furniture will always be handcrafted in Kentucky by artisans who embrace the simple way of life. Logheads Rustic Furniture is made from northern white cedar, a sustainable wood that's naturally rot and termite resistant. Its beauty and quality will add warmth to your earthy lifestyle for generations to come. 
Be sure to check out everything they have to offer at logheadshomecenter.com. And while you're at it, give Tommy and Gwen a shout on Facebook or Instagram at Logheads Home Center. All right, Mike. Well, we are back, and uh, we just put the old foe to rest. What What did you bring for us for me today? I guess I'd All say right. for us, but well, you know me. When I'm bringing it, it's going to be spicy. Yeah. So I brought you a rye. I brought Sagamore Spirit Rye Whiskey. Not Not a bourbon. Not a bourbon. And uh, I actually got this bottle from a friend, uh, Jason Calori. He's uh, he runs the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room, but. Uh, he gave me this bottle, and it is uh, it's a barrel select program whiskey. This one is uh, barrel number seventy two, and uh, it was actually picked by Mirage Fine Spirits and Whiskey Crusaders. And the Whiskey Crusaders pick twenty nineteen barrel seventy two four six rack three. It's a six year old barrel proof rye. It seems like you've mentioned the Sagamore rye on a number of episodes we've had. I have some. It made of, an impression on you, I think. I don't know if the the nose on it does, and it, and I'm nosing this, and it it smells like Sagamore. Um, and is that because it's malted? Um, you know, I don't know. This is 110 proof, uh, 110 proof straight rye whiskey, and uh, let me see if I can figure something out from the back of the bottle here. Yeah, it's just a six-year-old rye, barreled at uh, 110 proof. You know, I think that and the Old Maysville and uh, some other rye whiskeys, they have that, I don't know what, I keep calling it bitter persimmon. I don't mean that in a bad way. I just think that kind of fruit. The fruity smell it it's a weird smell to me i don't i don't know well and apricots. you know you know pennsylvania and maryland have a very long history of rye production this is a maryland rye uh, i i've had the barrel strength version of this and if, i think we had it on an episode where we did the collaboration with the bourbon lens the bourbon lens guys yeah yeah i think it fared pretty good in that I, it didn't win but no. i think it did pretty good I think we're actually all shocked by it. By it was, uh, you know, the nose on it just is a little different. Yeah, it's got, it does have that little bit of malty nose to it. I don't know if it has any malted rye in it or not. I can't answer that question, but we can, we can reach out to them, find all out. Right. I noticed our, one of our guests showed up, Jim. <laughs> I see Will Woodrow walked in here. He walked in here and he's going to enjoy the fire with us. I spilled some bourbon on, on the floor earlier. Uh, now I was pouring some sample bottles for, uh, Bob and Bob and Steve, and he licked a little bit up, and it almost like he got a little pepper on his nose. <laughs> <laughs> so is he a bourbon drinking dog? <laughs> he, I guess he is. He <laughs> liked that bourbon. It didn't make him sick or anything. I kind of worried about that because we don't feed him any any different kinds of foods. He just eats, uh, you know, dog food, and right. Um, he don't get no table scraps or nothing like that. You know, Jason always tells me. Again, he's the one I got this bottle from. He always tells me he gets like blueberry on a Sagamore rye. Hmm. I don't get the blueberry, but there's some kind of berry going on there. It's it's definitely sweet. I think if you're you were a, and I'm thinking that on some a lot of ryes now, if it's just a rye whiskey, it it, it almost has that same flavor, uh, you know, taste as a weeded bourbon. Yeah, it's got a pretty good finish on it. I think it actually, um, this is medium to long. Uh, it's not drinking real hot for 110. It's drinking real sweet for 110. It's not drying at all. It leaves some pretty amazing legs on the glass. It's more of a sheet. It's leaving a sheet on the glass. It takes a while to form legs. I could definitely sit by the fire, just like what we're doing right now, and drink this. I mean, and I'm not a rye guy. Yeah. Well, it drinks a little sweet for a rye. I think it does. And it's uh, it's not too hot and not too spicy for a rye. It's definitely got that uh, that berry, kind of berry flavor. Not much clove, but pepper. Yes, it does have a pepper to it. The nose doesn't match the taste. And, you know, the nose has a little bit more of a dark 
fruit to it. And then the taste is a little bit more of a light berry kind of. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm still getting that bitterness on the nose or something uh, like a yogurt smell. I, I, I don't know. It's almost off-putting to me when I smell it. And I remember when we did it with a bourbon lens, we tasted that. That was the same comments they said that the nose, you know, it just doesn't match up. And I think that's a good thing to me is to tell everybody, hey, just because your nose doesn't agree with you, your taste buds might love it. You know, they might, your taste buds might say, wow, this is some amazing juice. Well, Mike, what, what, what do we got coming up? We got, uh, what else we got coming up? We, we talked about Jackie's Icon. We're going to start going on some more barrel picks. I'm going to go on a, on my first barrel pick and I'm, I'm excited about that. They go on a barrel pick. I've never been on one and that's where I'm going to get to go into a, a Rick house and there you go. Try some bourbon out. And well, Jimmy, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you're getting to do it. I just went on one last week. Um, Back down to Barton again, did a, another foolproof pick. You know, the the uh, the 1792 foolproof has gotten a lot of notoriety in the last year. And got put on high on some lists. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, anyway, we we did another one of those. And hopefully we're going to get to do another turkey pick this year. That would be good. We're going to have Steve Coombs um, coming on. And now he's a great writer, uh, likes to pair food with bourbon. Maybe on our show we can get him to pair some, maybe some chocolates with some bourbon. Speaking of that, and th- this will go great with this whiskey that you just took a big swig of. I brought some chocolates. So I got some chocolates here for you. I got a chocolate-covered almond. Oh, um, let's try it with a sag of Yeah, I think it'll be. It. This is perfect. All right. All right, folks. Highly recommended. <laughs> Chocolate and bourbon, right? That's the thing. You take a big chew of that chocolate and that almond. I'm making all kinds of noises on the microphone. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Man, they are just made for each other. If you haven't laid out some chocolates and eaten it with bourbon and paired them together, oh, my gosh. Pretty good. And most people would drink after dinner. Let's say back in the eighteen hundreds, was cognac was the thing to drink. Cognac, with? yeah, was that the thing? And brandy was the thing brandy. to drink with after a dessert whiskey. I think they called them and port wine. Port wine, dinner, yeah. So would this be today's cognac? I don't know. You know, it's not. It's not the same thing. But certainly, uh, bourbon has. I mean, there are some things that bourbon goes extremely well with. I tell you, one of the things I had that I thought was really good was I had um, some Southern biscuits with some country ham and a little bit of apple butter on them. Eat that, drink it with some Knob Creek. Oh, it was really good. Hmm. So there, there's some things out there that will surprise you. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Recently, me and Vivian went down to a new restaurant there in Louisville called Biscuits Belly. Yeah, and I haven't I, been there. Man, I tell you what, if you're in Louisville and you're on the Urban Bourbon Trail, definitely stop by Biscuits and Belly on Main and they they'll they'll serve you right up some homemade biscuits. Their biscuits are about as big as my fist. Um that's a that's a big biscuit. <laughs> give them, stop by there and give them a try. All right, Mike, I'm going to I'm going to throw a wrench in things here. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so we just enjoyed the Sagamore, right? Yeah. I'm going to say let's raid your bar. Let's oh, let's man. pick one. Well, I actually got two extra new bourbons over there. Yeah. So, Jim, what'd you uh, what'd you rip out of my bar there? Well, I went for that new Baker's bottle. It's kind of kind of a nice looking bottle. You know, it caught my attention. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I I like the rebranding of it. You know, if you didn't know, they rebranded it. Um, they went from a small batch to a single barrel. They got rid of the box, which I I kind of like that. You know, the last couple I didn't, hadn't seen that box. The Baker's box. Yeah. They had a box with it for a while. <clears throat> um, some of the ones I'd seen. Oh, you mean the the new one? The new one? Yeah. Okay. Got um, it. So this one, you know, going from a small batch to a single barrel, I could see that the price went up. A lot of people didn't like that, but I like it. You know. Well, I mean, the difference I think would probably be that you know, there's probably a little more labor involved in doing single barrels versus batch bourbon. Because we've been to Buffalo Trace and watched them when they're when they're dumping like. Uh, 
Dorsey Stag or something like that. You know, they're just running the barrels down this assembly line and just dumping them all out and they're all going in one big vat. Sure. And then they're filling. Here they've got to they got to do it one barrel at a time. And that's going to that's that's labor intensive. Sure it is. Um I, I like the bottle, I like the cork on it, how they, you know, the cork stopper in it. Um a little bit different of a bottle. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that's another bottle out there like that. I think another thing that happens with single barrels is you got to be a little bit more careful about not letting a bad barrel get through, right? Because if you got a barrel that's not quite up to snuff, it doesn't get masked by getting added to another 100 barrels. It yeah. stands on its own. Now, this this barrel was 107 proof. Well, yeah, well they're they're it, they're all 107 proof. We're going to proof it down. They're for all you. proofing them down to 107, and you know this this particular barrel is eight years and six months. So, so the seven on there is everything's going to be older than seven years old. Right, that's the minimum age for a baker's. This one has the nose on it is like Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> You're always going to cereal, man. <laughs> I'm a cereal guy. <laughs> You remind me of that. Remember that show, Beverly Hillbillies? Uh, Je- <laughs> Jethro? Jethro. Jethro. Don't tell people that. Big Chief ain't Jethro. I, <laughs> I'd have to whoop him. <laughs> Jeth- Jethro would pour a whole box of cereal in a bowl <laughs> with a gallon of milk. <laughs> I do drink a lot of milk. <laughs> well, Mike, I love the nose on that. It, You know, it's typical beam nose, kind of. I get that. It's like oats on it a little bit. I'm not a big fan of oats and bourbon, but... You know, I tried to steer you towards Woodford Reserve Oat. You're like, oh, I've, no, I've, that. I've had the oat grain. I'm not, after, I'm not, I'm not going back You're to not it. Digging that. Sorry. I mean, I'm sure there were some people out there that liked the oat grain. It wasn't for me. This is, uh, this has got a little bit of a savory note to it on the nose. I think this would go good with a big piece of uh, barbecue meat. A little bit of just a hint of dried fruit in there. A lot of oak though, right? This one does have, yeah, it's got a lot of oak, but you know, it's an eight and a half year old barrel. Now what's the standard beam? How old is a standard beam? You know, just the gym beam. Yeah. I mean, probably four, three or four, four years old. Probably four years. You know, I wouldn't say it's so less. This is four. double the age of that. Right. It's been in that barrel for a while. How many bottles do you think they get out of each barrel? At eight years? Yeah. 100, one, 140? Yeah. Oh, at 107 proof, man. My brain's not that good. I can't do no, that. I can't, can't do, do that math. math. Yeah, I tell you right now, I think that this would pair so well with barbecue, country ham, bacon. It's kind of got that savory note to it. You know, old Baker Beam. He was that wild child. Yeah, he rode a Harley, um, leather jacket. But he said he was a quiet man. Yeah. I love that history, and I'm, you know, we talked about that earlier, but I'm glad that they have an expression from Knob Creek to Baker's. You know, they they got the family in there for sure. Well, I, I tell you, I think that you know Baker's has always been kind of uh, passed over on the shelf, in my opinion. It kind of got lost up there. You know, it always sat next to Booker's up on the shelf, but. I, I didn't often reach for it. Did you? No, I I passed it up myself. And I think I wrote that on one of our um, latest posts on, on social media that I'd walked past it plenty of times. I I think because it was more in a wine bottle shape of a bottle and, you know, it just didn't interest me. And then this came out and there's two different expressions of this is correct. There's this right here, which is a seven year older than they had a 13 year old. 13. Right. And I think it, Oh, this flew off the shelf. Yeah. Um, well, I think there's a little bit of hate out there. There's always going to be a little bit of hate when somebody changes something and raises the price, right? I mean, look at Heaven Hill. They didn't release Heaven Hill Bottle and Bond in Kentucky. Right. And Kentuckians feel slighted by that. But, you know, it is a beautiful bottle. I think uh, time will tell if, if it's going to be, uh, you know, a successful expression. But it, for me, it's all about what's in the bottle. And this is this is good juice. This is good. I think it's uh, it's a well aged bourbon. It's got a good color to it. It's packed full of flavor. I, I don't think it's overly hot, but it does have a good finish on it. It definitely has a a good amount of oak. I mean, the barrel did did a job on this liquid. There's no well, doubt did. about it. But this it's also a single barrel, so it's 
you know, you might pick a bottle of this up and it, somebody else might get a bottle and it's going to be totally different because it's single barrel. Um, but the nice thing about this is it was released nationwide. So any of our listeners out there, you know, hopefully you can find a bottle of it and pick it up. And that cork, now, you don't want to throw that at anybody. It'll knock them out. <laughs> <laughs> it weighs about a pound and a half. You know, we, we uh, opened up the bottle of decades today, and I hadn't had that open. We drank it before, yeah. Bo Garrett, but I hadn't opened it yet. And I, my buddy's like, oh, I'd like to try that. Can we open it? I said, let's open it. And the weight of that yeah. stopper, the cork, is uh, – that thing's got to weigh a half pound. <laughs> I mean, this one's actually, a, it looks like a tooled piece of aluminum, I guess. Um, and that bottle is not cheap. They, I don't, that's not a bottle. I haven't seen that bottle anywhere. Yeah, they, they had that one made special, no doubt. Yeah. And that, that costs money. And I think people will need to realize that a little bit. The branding, there's a lot that goes into that. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess out there, we're not trying to protect the companies or nothing. We're just saying, hey, look at it for what it is. It does cost money to make money and they, they put the effort into it. And I say cheers to them. Yeah. Well, Mike, we've walked through a few expressions tonight. We got to try the, uh, well, we went back in time and tried an older, uh, barrel pick from the silver dollar of an old Forrester single barrel. Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. I thought it was good. Then we got some samples in from old Forrester and we got to try their hundred proof version as well as their barrel strength version. Cheers to old Forrester for, uh, listening to the folks out there and and trying to do what's right and what's in demand, I think that their new barrel program is going to be vastly successful. I think their old barrel program was successful. I think it's going to be even more now. Oh yeah. And then we got to try uh, some Sagamore. We got to try a barrel pick of Sagamore Spirits Rye. Some rye. That's a good rye. I mean, if if you're a rye fan out there and uh, you're looking for something uh, new that you haven't tried before. I would say reach for the Sagamore. It's a it's a little pricey, but it's a good pour. And if you can find a barrel pick of it, go for it. Barrel picks are always good. They're they're outliers, you know. They kind of they jut out a little bit from the standard profile, and I like that a lot. And then we got you you picked this Baker's out. Baker's. And I would say on the Baker's here that uh this is a sipping whiskey. Oh, most definitely. And uh you know, the bottle's fine enough has a nice enough look to it and the juice inside's good enough. You can share this with a friend, you know, I, I, there's no doubt about Give that. it as a gift or open it up when somebody special comes over and is hanging out with you for the weekend. I think that, uh, the bakers would be a, uh, would be a fine choice. And, and I, and I mentioned this when we were tasting it. I think if you're having barbecue or, um, you know, country ham or some, some, some good, southern style meat dinner this this will this will pair real good with it i think it will i'm still getting that honey note cheerios on it if i had to list this and put it with those old foresters and that sagamore this yeah. would come in second place right behind that barrel strength, barrel old strength old full. yeah oh yeah let's talk about that tonight so what what takes the win tonight well that barrel that barrel strength old forester is is something special i think jackie and them hit it on the head when they produced that and they decided, Hey, we're going to put this out. Um, I think they're making the right decisions down there. Um, a beautiful expression of, of whiskey for people to enjoy. And I really do think they will be successful in it. Absolutely. So number one, old Forrester barrel strength, single barrel. Oh, no doubt. Number two, I'm the going new with Baker that. seven single barrel. I'm going with that. Yeah. And number three, the Sagamore rye. Ooh, I, I'd, I'd, you say that, I'd say that single barrel pick because of that banana notes and stuff. There we go. I, I don't know that Sagamore, just that nose, the nose of it just, I don't know, it, it hurts me a little bit, but then I taste it. I'm like, this, this is good whiskey. Oh, we're different guys. Yeah. We like it different. That, and then the Sagamore would be before that 100 proof for me. All right. Well, yeah. fair enough, Mike. I think uh, I think I had a good time here tonight. I appreciate you inviting me over to sit in front of your fire. Woodrow's out. He is. He, he, he's, he's done. <laughs> he's laying on my boots. He's what he's doing. Right, well, well, I, I think my feet are sweating. He's a he's definitely a warm guy. Well, we'll close her down here. I'll give you a chance to let everybody know how to find us and 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 reach out to us. So you can find us at the Bourbon Road on Instagram and on Facebook, and you can go to our website and read our blogs, find our episodes on there. Um, 
We haven't put our gear on there yet, our glasses or anything. Yeah, I did want to say something about that. I just got an email from somebody uh, that was on our website, and they tried to go to our store to make a purchase, and it didn't work. And I feel real bad about that, but that's on me. I need to get that store up and it's, running. It's coming. It's coming. Remember, it's just me and Jim that's doing this. We don't have a big staff or anything. We're not uh, other podcasts that there's 10 or 15 podcasts. It's just me and Jim. And we work. And we both have f- full-time jobs. That's right. Uh, it's, uh, so, and, I, and we both have farms that we have to take care of, too. Please work with us. We're trying our best to get our stuff out there, and we want to we want to help our listeners out, and we want you to have our gear out there. If you do have one of our glasses, and we've given some of them out, please take a photo of your favorite bourbon in that glass. Put it up on our on the roadies. Put it, send it to us, um, and we'll share it. I, I'll definitely put it up on our Instagram. I'll put it up on our Facebook. Help me. Help me help you. And there's two two hashtags we encourage you to use. One is oh, yeah. pound the bourbon road. And the other one is pound your bourbon your way. Your bur- your or hash. It's called hashtag. Sorry. Hashtag your hashtag bourbon road. your bourbon your way. Yeah, and your bourbon your way. So those two hashtags, I use them every time. If you put a post up there, hashtag your bourbon road. I want to see your bourbon road, and I want to see your bourbon your way. And who knows? You might even end up with another glass if you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I I think our social media is is doing great. I'm, I'm sitting here watching our phone, and my phone just is always rolling with uh, social media. So I, I love it. I love uh, the interaction we're getting. Find us out there. You can send a... Uh, Either one of us, a email at jim at the bourbon road.com or mike at the bourbon road.com, and we'll get back with you. If you're a bourbon company out there and you want to work with us, we'll, we'll look forward to working with you. If you want to sponsor us, reach us out know. to us. Let us know. Absolutely. And if you're looking for a place to hang out with like minded folks and chit chat a little bit about bourbon and what's on the shelf and what to buy and what not to buy, join our Facebook group, The Bourbon Roadies. And uh, you can find us, just search The Bourbon Roadies, and you'll find us. And uh, request access, and we'll we'll grant it. We'd love to have you. Yeah, I I don't think there's one person that I haven't granted access to. Even if they, sometimes they don't answer the questions, I'm like, I just come on in and join a group. And uh, as soon as I, some of those people I grant access to, as soon as I grant them access, they come in and they start interacting with us. And I I think that's fascinating. Um, We got some great fans out there. and I, you know, I think we're building something great here. Yep. Number 28 on iTunes or iPod, Apple Podcasts. We're, we're, we're heading for number one. What do you think? I think that's, can we get to number one fans? Can we, listeners, can we get us to number one? Uh, tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody about us. Like us on Facebook. Get your friends to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us everywhere. Um, give us a review. Give us a review. Honest review. Good or bad, guys. We'll take it both ways. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I like the great reviews. Uh, if you want to leave us a bad one, just... Uh, well, we are 100% five-star reviews now, so... Yeah. I will not like that first four-star, but I'll take it anyway. <laughs> just happy to hear back. Well, Jim. Mike. I say to our listeners out there, we'll see you on down the bourbon road. See you down the road. appreciate all of our listeners and we'd like to thank you for taking time out of your day to hang out with us here on the bourbon road we hope you enjoyed today's show and if so we would appreciate if you'd subscribe and rate us a five star with a review on itunes make sure you follow us on facebook twitter and instagram at the bourbon road that way you'll be kept in the loop on all the bourbon road happenings you can also visit our website at the to read our blog listen to the show or reach out to us directly We always welcome comments or suggestions. And if you have an idea for a particular guest or topic, be sure to let us know. And again, thanks for hanging out with us. 